Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and you are on the Audio Advisor channel. It turns out that some engine models have a shaft like this and many do not know why it's needed. So let's see what it's for. The shaft is called a balance shaft and based on the name, it is clear that it is designed to balance the engine. The fact is that during the operation of the engine, so-called inertial or free mass forces arise. These forces arise when some parts move with acceleration, as it is in the engine. The piston and in the connecting rod make accelerated movement and all this affects the engine itself. The force of inertia is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. Therefore, the greater the mass and acceleration of the body, the greater the force of inertia. Let me show you a simple example. Let's say I have such an object. Now it will receive some kind of acceleration. So at this moment, when I turn it in the opposite direction, the object, as it were, continued to move by inertia. And therefore, in order for me to turn it around, I need to overcome this force of inertia. And so, once again, all objects that move with acceleration have the force of inertia. If we take some kind of plate in the gym, I will sharply do a movement back and forth like this. Then I will be pumped like this, because this plate will have inertia forces. And a similar situation occurs inside the engine. That is, if I am in the center of the engine, I will see that the pistons perform such a reciprocated motion, and inertia forces act on the engine itself. Inside the engine, when the piston group moves back and forth, it creates inertia forces of the first and second order. Primary imbalance produces vibration at the frequency of crankshaft rotation. Second order inertial forces mean that the frequency of their occurrence is twice as fast as the engine speed. Therefore, in order to somehow balance exactly the second order inertial forces, it's necessary to make some kind of mechanism that will rotate twice as fast as the engine crankshaft. Let's go back to the first order inertial forces. They are balanced with the help of counterweights that are installed on the opposite sides of the Conrad journals of the crankshaft. But let's get back to the main topic of our video. This balancing shaft is designed to balance the forces of inertia of the second order. Usually, two such shafts are installed on the engine. Structurally, depending on the engine models, these shafts can be located a little higher, lower or to the side. It doesn't matter. The drive can be either chain or using a gear. These shafts rotate directly from the crankshaft, as I have already said, and the rotational speed of these balancing shafts will be twice as high as the frequency of the crankshaft. Structurally, on this shaft, as you can see, there is a counterweight. Depending on the brand of the engine, the shape of this counterweight may be different, but the principle of operation remains the same. Depending on the rotation of this balance shaft here, the counterweight creates an inertial force in various directions. Suppose if you are in this position, then this counterweight's inertial force is faced in that direction, as if the shaft wants to move there. So if at this moment in the engine the piston group is also in that extreme position, then these inertial forces seem to balance each other out, and this balance shaft works. Well, yes, maybe I don't explain it well enough, but you must understand the simple truth that this balance shaft, with the help of these counterweights when it rotates, balances the inertial forces that are created by the piston group during engine operation. And now a little bit of history. Initially, the balance shafts were installed by the Mitsubishi Motor Company in 1976. I had a car with such an engine. It was made in 1993 and there were these balancing shafts and the engine displacement was 1.6. So, over time, other manufacturers borrowed this technology. Now balancing shafts are installed by companies such as Audi, General Motors and by the way, this shaft is from Mercedes. Now these shafts are installed on engines with a volume of 2 liters or more, that is, on sufficiently powerful models. Although, at one point of time, these shafts were installed 
on a 1.6 liter engine. So, what we have on the market today? Some manufacturers are struggling to reduce second-order inertial forces and install such balancing shafts on their engines. This, of course, increases the cost of the car, but at the same time reduces the vibration load on the engine. The second part of the manufacturers does not react at all to second-order vibrations. They do not fight them at all and do not install any balancing shafts. Why am I telling you this? The problem is that, with high engine mileage, the so-called moment of overhaul comes, and when I disassemble the engine, it turns out that there are such balancing shafts inside and there is a problem of choosing either to install new ones or simply throw them away. Since they also wear out over time, these bearings wear out, these gears wear out, and in general, it may someday jam. If the time has come for a major overhaul and you need to buy a new balancing shaft, be sure to visit our website outdoorostrov.by. There you can even buy two balancing shafts, and most importantly, there is a convenient delivery. So let's go back to the problem of choice. As you already understood, with high mileage, there comes a time when you need to either throw the shaft away, which is recommended by many repairmen, they say that this is basically an extra part, or replace it with a new one. As a development engineer, I still recommend that you do not throw the shaft away, but install a new one, since during the development of this engine, it was taken into account that this balancing shaft will be there to absorb excessive inertia and vibration from the engine as a whole and all its attachments. Do you know what it looks like for me? It's like when a person's tonsils are removed. It seems that he somehow lives without them, but in the future there are some consequences. The same is true here. If you simply take and remove this shaft, then the engine itself would not really like all that shaking. But at one time on my engine, somewhere in 2002, these balance shafts were removed and I didn't notice that the engine became noisier or didn't feel any vibrations appear. You know what I think? In the short term, when a little time has passed, you will not immediately notice any consequences of the fact that you removed this shaft. But I want you to think about engineers who designed this mechanism while developing the engine. Since they put it there, it means that they took into account all the connections in this engine, and this mechanism is designed to reduce vibration loading and increase the durability of the engine as a whole. So, this is all that I wanted to say about the balance shaft and the inertial forces. I hope you liked this video with me trying hard to explain it, although with use of my hands. So, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. All the best to you and see you soon. We have already climbed in such a large intestine. It's impossible to get out of here just like that. Marat, tell me honestly, do you understand or not? So, on the market... Oh, how I sleep. This, of course, increases the cost of, this, uh, of the design, but at the same time, or on these engines, there are no balancing shafts, shafts, well, unexpectedly. Okay, the end. The end. No, this is the end.